in our previous lecture we have studied the identification of ions from the colorless solution in previous lecture we have studied that if we are provided a colorless transparent solution then it shows the pres it measures the presence of ammonium aluminum calcium or zinc ion but on the other hand if you are provided the color transparent solution then it may includes copper 2 ions iron 3 ions iron 2 ions and chromium chromium 3 ions it is comparatively an easy method as compared to uh, identification of cations from the colored solution because the color of the solution itself shows the presence of certain ions for example if you have a blue colored solution it shows the presence of copper 2 ion if you have a light green uh, colored solution or the yellowish green colored solution then it shows the presence of iron 2 ions which is also called ferrous ion if you have a yellow colored solution or the light brown colored solution it shows the presence of iron 3 ions which is also called ferric ion if you have a dark green colored solution it shows the presence of chromium 3 ions similarly we will perform our chemical test for their identification with sodium hydroxide aqueous sodium hydroxide and aqueous ammonium so initially we are performing our test with aqueous sodium hydroxide so on adding aqueous sodium hydroxide they give their own precipitate their own colored precipitate for example blue ppt obtained in case of copper two ions dirty green or moss green ppt obtained in case of iron two ions or the ferrous ions reddish brown or dark brown precipitates are obtained in case of the presence of iron 3 ions in the solution grayish green precipitates are obtained in case of chromium 3 ions present in the solution so now see this uh, now see these uh, identification scheme step by step first you will provide it a colored solution or a salt that you will prepare the solution in aqueous form so on adding a small quantity of sodium hydroxide you will get blue precipitate and you will see that these blue precipitates are insoluble in axis even more precipitate may be obtained so it shows there there might be copper ions present copper two ions might be present there and if you are provided yellow solution it already shows the presence of iron three ions but on adding sodium hydroxide uh, it is another evidence that it gives the brown precipitate and brown precipitate shows the presence of iron 3 ions and these brown precipitates remain insoluble and even more precipitate can be obtained in excess of sodium hydroxide if you are provided yellowish green solution or light green solution and you add sodium hydroxide drop wise or in a small quantity then you will get dirty green precipitate or the moss green precipitate and these moss green precipitate remain insoluble in excess of sodium hydroxide it shows the presence of iron 2 ions but we will perform confirmatory tests with ammonium hydroxide in next step so here we are we are giving we are explaining all the uh, reaction uh, all these cations and the reaction with sodium hydroxide in aqueous form so you can see here uh, if you are provided dark green colored solution it shows the presence of uh, chromium 3 ions already and the formation of these grayish green precipitate also emphasize the presence of chromium 3 ions but here a result is slightly different that when we ex when we add excess of sodium hydroxide these grayish, uh, grayish green precipitate dissolves to form dark green coloration again so this test might be used for the di distinguishing test between the iron 2 plus ion and chromium 3 plus ion because sometimes we have some ambiguity due to the due to the similarity of their color sometimes we cannot identify the difference of color just our visualization so a chemical test with sodium hydroxide is very helpful for distinguishing between iron 2 plus and chromium 3 plus now come to the test with aqueous ammonia 
So when we perform these tests with aqueous ammonia, almost all the results would remain same, but there are some differences in certain cases. So here you can see the same results that light blue colored solution gives blue precipitate just like before in sodium hydroxide. Here we obtain the same result. Similarly, iron 2 ions give dirty green precipitates and iron 3 ions are giving red brown precipitate or the brown precipitate and chromium 3 ions are giving grayish green precipitates. Uh, but here, when we perform these tests step by step, then we observe that the, with small quantity of ammonium hydroxide, again copper ions are giving light blue precipitates. But in excess, result is different from the so result is different from the result of adding sodium hydroxide because in adding sodium hydroxide, uh, PPT remained insoluble, and there was no dark color solution. But here, on adding excess of ammonium hydroxide, we obtain dark blue coloration here it shows the presence of ammon uh, it shows the presence of copper two ions present in the solution uh, or you can say it confirms the presence of copper two ions on the other hand when you are provided light blue uh, light yellow solution or light brown solution then it gives the same result as we have seen previously with sodium hydroxide that it gives dark brown precipitate with a small quantity of ammonium hydroxide as well as with excess of ammonium hydroxide. There is no dissolution. Further, more precipitate can be obtained in excess of ammonium hydroxide. So it shows the presence of iron 3 ions. So it con confirms that these solu this solution contains iron 3 ion. Now this light blue coloration, uh, I'm sorry, this light green coloration shows the presence of iron 2 ions that is also called ferrous ion. On adding ammonium hydroxide, we get the similar result as previously with sodium hydroxide. So here, again, it shows the presence of iron 2 ions in the solution, or we can say that it confirms the presence of iron, iron 2 plus ion. So as PPT remains insoluble, it shows that solution contain iron 2 plus ion. If you are provided dark green coloration, it shows already shows the presence of chromium 3 ions. On adding ammonium hydroxide, it gives grayish green precipitate, and these grayish green precipitate remain insoluble in excess of ammonium hydroxide. Now you can see the difference here because the test for the chromium ion with sodium hydroxide, we observe that when we add when we added excess of sodium hydroxide here. Uh, ex uh, excess of sodium hydroxide in this precipitate, then this precipitate becomes soluble and giving uh, and has given the same coloration as their uh, aqueous solution. But that was the case in sodium hydroxide. So, in presence of sodium hydroxide in excess, uh, these precipitates are soluble due to uh, the formation of some soluble substances. But here, in presence of excess of ammonium hydroxide, it remains insoluble. So in this way, we have completed our, uh, our topic of identification of cations in our syllabus.